Cherries fans, welcome back to another edition of Sparky Stats during the festive season. Yes, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year, depending on when you watch this. I hope you're having a wonderful time. And it's the perfect time to go through our 2022, but obviously with a bit of a twist. On the channel, we will be going through a bit more of a uh, a debate-ish type of review, looking at some of the best moments of the year. Please do check that out if it hasn't been released already. But for my side of things, obviously, just going to have a little look at some of the best and some of the worst of this year, looking purely at the stats. And when I say the stats, it's mostly going to be XG. I don't want to delve too far into this. We're going to have a nice, succinct group of top threes, um, with one honourable mention, um, looking at some of our best and worst defensive displays of the year and our best and worst offensive displays of the year. So to kick things off, let's have a look at some of our worst. Let's get the bad let's get let's get the bad things out of the way. Here's a, just going to give you a top three or bottom three in this case, of our worst three defensive performances of the year. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at this by XG, not purely in terms of goals conceded, although I don't, I think most of you won't be surprised at what our least two of this bottom three are. Um, but for these lists, please do um, play the guessing game with me if you want to. Um, pause the video whenever you like. Just have a think as to whether you think some of our performances this year will feature in this list but to get things off our third worst defensive display of the season according to xg is against manchester city we shouldn't really have conceded four in that game according to the chances that city made i was there it wasn't great but i think four nil i think was a little bit harsh on bournemouth on that day um the next one i think was an interesting one uh, Swansea City. Now, I do want to bring up here that all of the XG stats that I'm using today are coming from InfoGoal. Uh, there are plenty of other sources for XG data, Understat, uh, FopMob, Opta, although they're not really readily available too much. Um, however, InfoGoal did still have the data from last season. The others have just wiped it from or didn't have it at the time. Um, so InfoGoal gave... Swansea a 0.27 xg which I think is a little bit harsh uh, personally um, of their three goals scored in that game that very entertaining game towards the end of the last season um, if it wasn't and frustrating enough that we conceded three goals there apparently we barely should have conceded at all uh, based on the quality of chances and then no prizes for the last one and Let's not dwell on Liverpool, shall we? Moving on. Our best defensive dis displays of the season. Have a think about what you believe was probably some of our best performances defensively. No surprise to you that all of these were games where we kept a clean sheet. So, spoilers, I guess. Uh, third best was Barnsley. Uh, if you remember Gary Cahill getting sent off in this one, I believe this is James Hill's only competitive league minutes for us since he joined um, in this game. Still managed to hold on just about in the end for a 1-0 victory that, yeah, we really weren't worth on the day. But uh, never mind, it got us over the line in the end. Uh, Sheffield United, 0-0 draw. Uh, remember some very good saves from Mark Travis in this one who really kept us in this game when um, it just looked as if they were shooing to score. But um, another good shutout that was... Um, an overperformance of keeping a clean sheet in this game. And then the last one is actually a Premier League performance, which some of you may well have caught in terms of what you thought was some of our best defending of the season. So of uh, the year, whenever I say season, I mean, yeah, um, was uh, against Wolves. Um, Gary Neal's first match in charge, obviously now our permanent head coach. But um, certainly in that game when we needed a decent pick-me-up after conceding nine, was a pretty um, pretty solid, for the most part, defensive display. Still needed Neto to only really pull off a decent one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, save or distraction routine um, and, a, and a couple of other routine saves. But uh, apparently they were worth almost two goals in that game and uh, keeping a clean sheet was pretty darn good in that one. Next screen, I'm going to actually just give us 
the top three best attacking performances just purely in terms of XG. In what games this season did we create the best chances that we have all year? And again, I said season, I meant year. I'm going to do that a lot. I know I will. Um, one honourable mention, because the top three actually all come from the championship, which I don't think any of you are going to be surprised by. The one honourable mention from the Premier League season so far, uh, and this is recorded before we play Chelsea, um, is Everton, which I think most people would probably agree was our best attacking display of the season so far overall. Um I haven't looked at Le I haven't looked at cup games uh, because that information isn't on info goal. Um, so to try and keep things all from the one source, I've just not bothered with cup games so far this season. But I wouldn't be surprised if our cup game against Everton was similar, if not better, than this. Uh, but two point three eight. Obviously, we scored three in a in a very comfortable three 0 win. But that shows that we were definitely worth that level of dominance in the scoreline. Um, the next, the third best of the year is actually against Stoke City, which is um, a game I don't really remember that well, to be honest, but apparently we were worth three goals in that game, basically. So not a bad display um, at that point in the year, I should, I should say. Uh, next is Bristol City. I think this one is one that if you were playing along, along at home, uh, you probably would have thought somewhere in this list uh, was 3.88. And considering that we were very close to not getting a win out of this game, that we were so dominant and scored three goals and almost threw it away towards the end. Um, yeah, it's a good thing we held on because we were certainly worth it in, in certainly one of our best um, performances of the year, no doubt. And then right at the top, Again, we've already seen once before uh, show up in this video uh, was Swansea City. Apparently, five point three five was our XG in that game, absolutely smashing Bristol into uh, the Bristol City game into second place, at, and only scored three. So, um, spoilers for something later on in this list, but that Swansea game was absolutely ridiculous. Let's have a look at the bad bits going forward this is again going to be looking at our bottom three in terms of compared to xg what were our real underperformances of this year when should we have scored far more than we actually did um this one interestingly all three games had different results uh, that we're going to be looking into for this one so first and foremost in third place, we have our final game of the season against Millwall. Um, and I actually do mean season when I say it that time. Um, at home, 1-0. Kiefer Moore obviously scoring that goal. But according to XG, we should have been far more comfortable. 2.58, which is a pretty decent showing. But a difference there of one and a half goals should have been much more comfortable in that final game. But regardless, we did win and we were obviously already promoted by that point, so it didn't really matter too much. Second place, Hull City. And this one was a loss. No goals, but apparently should have been two or more. That was a 1-0 one, one no loss, if I remember correctly. And I don't really remember too much from this game, to be honest, but uh, I suppose with it being a loss... Don't really want to remember too much from it, but uh, anyway, that was second place. Um, and as I said, you'll have already seen this game pop up once before. I kind of spoiled it in the in the previous uh, in the previous set of slides. Swansea City, um, just a mad mad game. Um, a whole two a whole two goals underperformed. A whole five goals we should have been. Uh, in, uh, should have scored, um, and thank God for that. Uh, Kiefer Moore coming back from injury and, and bailing us out on that one. As for the other side of the table, our top three, our best over performances from XG when we scored far more goals than we deserved to score, and in all three of these games, to give you a hint, we scored three goals um, where we really didn't accord. Didn't I say? When they say didn't deserve to, according to XG, as in we didn't produce the quality of chances that would suggest we score three goals. But we did. And that's why we 
were winning these games. So, third place, Birmingham City. Again, one that I probably most mostly remember for Jaden Anthony's um, slaloming, bouncy run, maybe I should call it, where he loses the ball maybe twice uh, trying to dribble past players, um, and still it just falls to him and he smashes it in the back of the net for the third after Jefferson Lerma had been sent off at that point. Second place, Coventry City. Um, similar point at which I remember us playing Huddersfield, where I went to Huddersfield, and we were very dominant. We didn't create many chances, but we looked so much better than Huddersfield. And the Coventry was relatively similar, but I think we only made really three chances and scored all three of them, um, meaning that we really only, quality chances were probably only about worth a goal, but we scored three, uh, and we were very, very good that day. Uh, and then lastly, obviously, Forrest. I've, I've kind of bounced ahead, but really, I think most of you probably would have remember, remembered Forrest as one of those games where, for a half, we were absolutely nowhere. And then Phil Billing smashes it in from outside the box. Our only goal so far this Premier League season from outside the box um, followed up by um, Dominic Solanke's sort of overhead slash bicycle overhead kick, um, which deflected in, and Jaden Anthony's lovely finisher after some great work from Solanke. So that was my um, uh, that was my list of top top and bottom threes. Um, I. Do just want to leave you with a couple more things before I let you go um, for the year, as I imagine this will be my last Sparky Stat video of the year. But I do want to be coming back with plenty more for you, um, particularly with the transfer window coming up in January. Um, before we go, just one resource and one call for um, call for comments. Um, I believe I've already shown understat.com um, to uh, to you before, just to show as a resource for looking at um, looking for XG information, looking for additional resources to find um, interesting stats to look into. Um, if we go into understat, going through into the EPL, and there we go to Bournemouth. Whilst it does give you a lot of information that maybe you would you would expect, some of the stuff that while research, doing some research for some other ideas before doing this video, um, came through some of these additional tabs that they've got here on Understat. So situationally to do with from open play set pieces, I mean, corners both offensively and defensively, we clearly need to work on, particularly after those two corners we took against Newcastle. My giddy aunt, that was pretty darn bad. Um, formation, less so. Game state is an interesting one, as it kind of looks like we're actually probably doing our best in terms of creating chances when we're in front, which is an, which is an interesting position to be in, although that does happen maybe not as regularly as we would like, but not as infrequently as you would think. Um, timing is an interesting one. I did not know we haven't scored a goal in the last 15 minutes of the first half yet, which is a weird statistical anomaly. I don't know what's going on with um, with Bournemouth's insistence on not putting in, uh, getting the goal in those in those last stages. Uh, we produced the least amount of shots in that period as well. Um, as for goals we're conceding. I think it's relatively consistent, but obviously beginning of the game and the end of the game seems to be our worst moments, um, which is understandable in a way towards the end of the game, but Bournemouth have really sort of been more famously known for fast starts, and it's just not something that we've done, well, since Scott Parker took charge, and that, that has then continued on. Um, and then shot zones is an interesting one again. We've got own goals outside of the box penalty area and six yard box. And you see that we're not getting many goals from inside the six yard box. And like I mentioned, only the one from Phil Billing outside the box. So um, obviously 18 goals isn't a huge amount anyway. It's not too bad for this time of year for the level of uh, the performances of the team is producing, I think. But um, certainly looking for 
bit more poaching, but want more shots for that to happen. We need that more from outside the box if that's going to occur. Um, so just a just an interesting one, just pointing out to those of you that are statistically inclined, like myself, um, to point out just another resource to, to have a look into. Um, if you want to pull together any of your own information, if you find anything interesting that you think, I wonder what that's been like for Bournemouth. And that's just another set of data points that you can um, that you can look at. Uh, last call is just for um, assistance from yourselves, obviously, because we are heading into the transfer window and the rumours are already flying about. Um, I've seen a number of posts on Twitter about people talking about Antoine Semenyo has once again been linked um, and a number of other players from quite a few different leagues. Um, and as much as I would like to do my own research into some players that I think we might be interested in. It's difficult to um, search through a dozen different leagues to try and find players that one will be available and two would be good enough. As much as at the start of the season, I think Harry Toffolo would have been a great signing. Now, I wouldn't say he's much of an upgrade on Zamora. And with the fact that we do have funds, we're looking for players that maybe are of a slightly higher level, but are also players that we can sign. And that's a very difficult set of restrictions that our um, our top brass are going to have to deal with. So if you find any interesting rumours that float about anything you think is credible, any player that you think hasn't been rumoured, but you do think would be an interesting buy... Put a link, uh, put a comment down below, put a link in the comments if you have a resource, uh, if you have um, an article that that comes from, or if you follow myself on Twitter at John Spark AFCB, please do send me a message on there, uh, whether it's a DM or, or just um, um, or just a link posted to me, uh, then I would be happy to look into it and, you know, I might include it in a video during January. But for now, that'll be it. I do wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and also a happy return to the Premier League and football for the Cherries going back into the Premier League. Let's hope that 2023 is just as good and just as forward-thinking and just as up the ladder as 2022 was. But only time will tell. Regardless, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas season. And I will see you all soon. Up the cherries.